So I'm here with Carol Mundell, who is the Director of Science at the European Space Agency. A pleasure to speak with you, Carol. Uh, we're at the European Space Operations Center, the headquarters for the control of the Euclid spacecraft, which has just sent back five test images. Uh, Carol, you were telling us in the uh, press briefing earlier, you told the audience that why should the average person care about such a billion dollar mission to space uh, looking for the cause of the fact that we only understand 95 percent of the universe uh, and you mentioned that cave dwellers 16,000 years ago were interested in space but they had no concept tell us what this means to you philosophically Philosophically, as I say, cave dwellers were looking at the night sky and observing the star patterns on the sky, drawing those on their cave, paint, cave paintings. And in those 16 to 20,000 years, our species has evolved to become a technological species. We now go into space. Our Euclid mission is in deep space, one and a half kilometers, one and a half million kilometers away from the Earth. And it's an exquisite, unique mission of technology and engineering put together. Um, and we will survey the night sky, 36% of the sky, back to 10 billion years of history to understand the nature of the dark universe. We understand only 5% of the universe, which is the ordinary matter that makes up you and me and stars and planets, and the rest of the 95% dark energy and dark matter, which drives the, the nature of the universe and the observed features that we see in the visible matter, um, is unknown to us. And we actually need to understand how to uh, map the universe so that we can understand what the laws of physics are beyond our current isn't it counterintuitively that counterintuitive that, that we only understand five percent of the known universe. I mean, there's something off about that. Well, not really, because the, the tools that we have, of course, our traditional telescopes capture light. So electromagnetic radiation from across the spectrum, from the highest energy gamma rays to long wavelength radios, radio waves. And the physics of the universe and the processes in the universe, like the formation of elements, the, the burning of stars, is actually encoded in that light. And so we capture the light with our detectors. But what we've done by actually studying the light from these different cosmic objects, we've realized that there's something else affecting those objects, affecting how quickly the galaxies rotate. They spin too quickly for our current equations. Um, we see the expansion of the universe accelerating, and so we realize that there's something else beyond what we detect with our regular detectors that is still um, is driving the physical nature of the universe. So we use light as a probe for the, for the dark. And uh, you're due to begin full science operations in January, is that correct? Indeed, so we're just now at a gateway. We've gone through the engineering verification through the summer. Um, we've just tested the mission in deep space. Obviously, you do all the testing you can in the lab, the exquisite testing, and now we've done that in deep space. We've shaken out some of the, the engineering challenges, and now the mission is ready to begin the cosmological survey science for the next six years of the mission. Thanks so much, Carol. Thank you. We Chris. look forward to hearing more.